Okay, so a little bit of self-reflection. Um, it's always important to do these. Um, I've just also tried to see if I can kind of capture some insights out of just talking about this kind of stuff out loud. Um, I've spent about 300 hours, probably more, on um, you know studying quantum computing. <clears throat> it's all, uh, you can find it in this playlist, it's 336 videos. Uh, and kind of like, I'm, I just wanna ask myself, first of all, have I learned anything? Um, was it worth the, <laughs> the time? And I'm, I'm trying to kind of put together multiple lines of thought. So why, why did I get interested into these at all? Uh, in this at all, like why, um, you know, I, I got it, I, I got into this because I remember that seeing something like Grover's algorithm and I just couldn't understand it like right away. Cause if you, you used to like computer stuff, computer science stuff, it's mostly, it's just, uh, and I've said that in other places in Twitter, it's just plumbing, right? I mean, it's, you know, you take um, pipes as your code and then water is, is sort of the execution or the information, right? And so it's a bunch of ifs and, 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 and whiles and nots and stuff like that. Um, at least kind of the old school programming. Uh, now with all this, you know, AI stuff and, and this is this is also kind of actually where all these uncertain system stuff um, really originated truly, in, right? This kind of notion of there are systems out there that they are unpredictable, or at least they seem so. And that brought me into like, cool, I, I have to understand that there's, there's gotta be at least a way to understand where does this unpredictability come from and where does these um, Grover think, like, how is this even work, you know? Um, and so that, that brought me into these, I don't know, it, I have to say, I have to admit I, I enjoyed a lot um, going through all this stuff and you know I probably now do it a bit differently but maybe not I don't know it, you know it was it's just pure innocent exploration playing with stuff being practical have I learned anything useful yes um, it, I definitely have I, I would say a solid understanding of where the quantum computing stuff is at the moment um, for those interested in in sort of the field itself from a business perspective I mean despite all the crap that's out there you know it's we're essentially trying to build a quantum computer right so we haven't built one yet or we haven't built one that is actually um usable um you know we've been we've built some stuff that is usable that, that can be used technically but it's not for any useful stuff because they're just too noisy too error prone so we you know that's where the industry is and this is probably where the focus, the big focus should be if you want to get into quantum computing. Just just go get go, go get help the, the, the machine actually be built. Um, on the software side, it's just like once you get through all the crap, like all the math stuff and all the, because it's everything very academic. So that's what makes it a bit blurred. Now, some of some companies have made it that a bit better uh, uh, where, you know, um, IBM specifically, they they have tons of like different stuff, which you know they, they have their own criticism as well. But um, because it's just everything too much business oriented, and it's more like you really feel like you're part of a funnel instead of just like a true educational experience. Um, but I mean, what else? Yeah, well, one thing one one thing that's important about to say about quantum computing is that um, if you wonder if you're wondering what is it that it is for what would i say i would say i would say quantum it's it's just keep the actual use cases aside quantum computing is all at least currently about doing stuff faster like considerably faster um it's not about doing things that you can't do with a quantum with a regular computer or uh well Oh, obviously, if you just say you can't do because they are too much time consuming, but like the, you can't do f feasibly, it's like it, at least a kind of computational, if you think about, I, I think I, I believe there's a term for this, but like the stuff you can do with a quantum computer um, in terms of the, the things you can calculate, the computations you can do, you can also do them in a classical one. They just take too much. I mean, that that's too long. That that is something that is um, a bit obvious and inside because it's like, well, you can simulate a quantum computer, um, and so therefore, if you can simulate a quantum computer, everything that a classical computer could do, 
uh, the quantum computer can do a classical can as well, but it's just it's a matter of time. So don't sign up for these if you just wanna, you know, th there's no magic wand or there's no like magic stone in there, something that's like you know crazy weird that you can't do, you know, with with a regular computer. It's just about doing it faster by exploiting quantum mechanics effects. Um, and that's kind of, I think, the biggest learning out of this is like, uh, it is going to be, it's it's going to be about getting, you know, doing stuff faster. And so that that's kind of where the potential of quantum computing is. Kind of finding clever ways to do this. And then obviously on the modeling side of things, it's like you can model, you can model physical systems. You can model, you know, um, quantum systems. Uh, because it's a quantum computer and so it requires less resources uh, from a time and space perspective I guess you could also argue it like that um, so it is going to be definitely useful to study this stuff just but again it's underlying the underlying advantage is the same it's just with a quantum computer you can do stuff potentially faster right now most of the stuff that is known nowadays even if it feels faster, you know, the, it, it, once the, the actual usable computer will be built, doesn't mean that it has to be faster because the, the sort of the error connection, the error correction mechanisms that will go on top of that might just make it useless, right? So it's got to be, from an algorithmic standpoint, a huge speed up. Otherwise, uh, otherwise, even if it's technically on paper faster, then the actual machine won't make it really uh, that fast now so so this is you know i think that's the gist of it like what quantum computing is like it's or what is it going to be for it's just going to help us make stuff faster which essentially it means we can move technology if, you know you, you can build technology that's currently not possible um potentially right because because with the with the classical computational methods we just you know you just can't do certain things because of the time that it takes the resources um yeah but essentially that's it i mean if you want to get into this you absolutely do not like of course it's very personal but you, i don't think you need a lot of prerequisites it's just go into it like just get into it just start learning some of the stuff and as you you know come across something you don't understand just stop and then unpack it um it just takes time and I, like, I, I spent 300 hours on this, so that's, <laughs> this is like, and actually if you check the date of my first video, uh, the date of my first video was like, what, uh, can I open this without uh, playing it? So this was three years ago. And now I'm doing already other stuff, so I'm, I'm just working, I'm, I'm exploring quantum mechanics itself, right? Because it's um, a bit of a different thing, so. <clears throat> kind of like going behind sort of the framework of why these things work uh, or, or, you know, where the uncertainty is. That's kind of like where, where my interest ultimately, uh, well, at least at the moment lies, right? Uh, but essentially that was like three years ago. And I think it probably took me like two full years to kind of do the whole thing. It's not that I was doing a video every day, but, you know, pretty consistent, um, I would say. Um, yeah, so I think, uh, I think that sums it up pretty much. Like, I, I'm, I'm sorry if that didn't deliver as in like, oh, quantum computing is amazing. It's the newest technology and you can do this and that. Look, essentially it's a technology that will enable us to do stuff faster. At least that's my understanding. I, I might be wrong, but I think that's my understanding based off uh, of what I've, you know, taken out of all these. Um, it's that simple. It's, it's something that is going to just make us, is it? I think so, right? Because essentially that's what you want as that, that, that's, that's, all algorithms, computationally is the same, right? You cannot do some magic, weird stuff that you can't do. Uh, you know, there's there's nothing you can't simulate with a classical computer. Um, so that's that's that already tells you everything. or should tell you everything. It's just about doing stuff faster. Uh, and um, is it worth understanding uh, and diving into this? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's it's actually quite fun to kind of you know break uh, away from the classical binary system zero one think about superpositions would that what does this really imply uh, but there's currently nothing you can't uh, simulate so that's that's where the advantage uh, is now whether you can do something that's probably good I mean that's definitely a good question can you do something that you can't do classically 
you can model everything. I think that actually should answer it. Uh, sure, an this answers the question. Um, yeah. From a quantum computing perspective, okay, let's not mix up topics. I'm not talking about quantum mechanical stuff or certain hardware ideas or things about, you know, um, even even like machine learning stuff and AI stuff, like the, the whole quantum stuff, that's the, the whole quantum thing story that's connected to it, it is going to be about like doing stuff, you know, building, building models that are basically executable because you could just... Uh, you know, you, you wouldn't just be able to do that with, uh, you know, uh, with a class with, with a kind of a classical model. Um, cool. I mean, if you have any questions, or them in the comments section. Uh, I think these kind of insights videos just help me as well to crystallize some of these things, right? Some of these insights. Um, but I do think that's it. Um, if I come up with anything else, I'll update it. I'll, I'll update you guys. But it's uh, it's essentially essentially these. Um, Am I missing anything? Probably not missing anything. It's about doing stuff faster. It's definitely about doing stuff faster. You know, this is all stuff about entanglement and this all thing about like understanding why this works the way that, that this works, but it's not like that's not essentially allowing you allowing you to do anything more than just compute some stuff uh, faster, right? using in interference essentially there's no magic to this it's the same interference that you know you drop a stone on a lake or whatever is the same concept just applied to waves and particles and whatnot um yeah so that's where I mean, one could argue that you can't maybe one could again i'll just drop this as a last closing note one could argue that because of the uncertain nature of it, right? The fact that a measurement on, of a qubit will give you a random result, for example. Um, and then you can't truly simulate randomness, right? Maybe that is that is the door to something new, as in you can simulate a quantum computer, but maybe, and that's a very speculative question, maybe with a quantum computer, you can build something from which something truly special emerges, right? Like this, this concept of emergence, that that it's a, you built a system and essentially there is a, a dynamic that emerges out of the system, which you can't simulate because whenever you'll simulate, you'll always be bound to some kind of, if you do classical simulation, it's like the, the actual randomness is not there. It's like the, you've always got some kind of classical, like, you know, hard-coded distribution somehow. Uh, so it's not truly, if the, if the randomness is true, it's not really, you know, you, something you can't simulate. Maybe. That's actually, yeah, that's actually good, um, a good insight. Um, probably have to write this down somehow. Uh, this is where, yeah, that's why. Yeah, it's uh, definitely an interesting, an interesting field to dive into. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Um, I'll try to do some of these insight videos a bit more often. Uh, same style. And uh, hope you enjoy the content of the channel. Have a good one.